Happy Sunday, Kitsch. It's your boy, Billy Z, Billy Zercat, and you are here today for Sunday Sandwiches. I am back with my Sunday Sandwich series, and today we are going to make something that I've been thinking about for, uh, let's say, six to eight months, um, and I'll get to that in a second. First off, welcome to Kitsch. Welcome to my Kitsch stream. If you're new to Kitsch and my channel and everything about this, my name is Billy Zurkat. I am a home cook and baker from Chicago, and I do collaborations and pop-ups around the city of Chicago to raise money for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Um, that's a little background about me. I was diagnosed uh, two years ago with a form of muscular dystrophy and cooking and baking helped me find a voice to advocate, share my story of reinvention through food uh, and cooking, and try to turn a positive into a really weird negative time. So. Uh, a couple of years later into this, so I've raised $38,000 for the MDA by creating different sandwiches, my namesake pizza, which is called the Tripping Billy, and uh, all sorts of stuff around the city. And I've been linked up with Kitsch now for over a year. Uh, my Kitsch anniversary just passed, and uh, I've been streaming for a year with the, the good people at Kitsch. So here to bring you some fun food, uh, some you know original recipes, and just try to have some fun. So this is what my Sunday sandwich series is about. And... Uh, we're going to have, uh, have a really good time today. And like I said, I've been thinking about this sandwich for a long time. But a couple things. You can follow me on Instagram. The Real Billy Z is my handle on Instagram. Find me on there. Follow me on Kitsch, uh, my Kitsch channel here. Make sure you're liking uh, my page and following me. You could join the chef's table. There are eight spots here that you can click on that chef's table, turn on your camera, and you can be a part of this stream and this broadcast. You can ask questions. You could... Just say, hey, Billy, I like your Vienna beef shirt. That's a sick shirt. Yeah. Billy, why are you actually dressed completely matching uh, your hot dog shirt? I don't know. I think that's just like what I do. And I like to, you know, be stylish, even with hot dogs. Uh, my shirt's dragged through the garden and I'm dragging my clothes through, uh, clothing through the garden as well. But you can join the chef's table, ask me questions along the, along the way here, have some fun. If you're a little shy and you don't want to be on camera, there's an ask the chef section. You can type in questions, ask me some things, make some comments here, and uh, I will try to get to those uh, throughout the stream as well. But most importantly, today's Sunday sandwich is called the Philadelphia, And it is a mashup of two iconic sandwiches from two amazing sandwich cities, Chicago, my hometown, and Philadelphia. So we are uh, going to make a hybrid. The Italian beef sandwich in Chicago is an iconic sandwich here in the city and got a lot of attention from uh, the show FX The Bear, brought a lot of attention to an Italian beef sandwich. So Italian beef sandwich is a cut of beef, whether it's bottom round, top sort line, different, different cuts, eye of round, um, basically a big hunk of meat that's slow roasted. And then once it's, once it's reached temperature, sliced and shredded or sliced thinly and then it's uh basically warmed up in a au jus um, or broth basically a gravy au jus whatever you want to call it that's really spiced with different like fennel coriander basil uh, oregano red chili flakes all sorts of seasonings obviously a ton of garlic and uh it's a very simple sandwich that's served on a sub roll with Italian beef and then we have a condiment here, uh, which we've talked about this numerous times, jardinera, pickled uh, pickled vegetables that are preserved in oil, and then sometimes also served with uh, sweet peppers, so just green roasted green peppers, basically. And then you can have that sandwich dipped, uh, which means you're taking it and dunk it and dunking it into the uh, au jus. Um, you can have it dry if you want to, if you're a psychopath, or you can have it baptized where it's just like drenched. It's just soaking, and the bread basically falls apart. But that is what makes an Italian beef sandwich great. The flavor, the mess of it, it's just hmm, it's home style. Brings you home. And then Philly, you know, you may say, okay, Philly, are you going to make this? Is this going to be a hybrid like Italian beef cheesesteak? No. A Philly cheesesteak is awesome. I love them. They're great. But I'd argue the best sandwich to come out of Philly is the Italian roast pork and green sandwich. So it's a similar concept. You got pork. Uh, pork shoulder that is seasoned with a lot of the seasonings that you would get on Italian beef. That's roasted, cooked in temperature, and then again sliced in, reheated in a uh, in a broth. Just uh, you know, all, you know, gravy, jus, what do you want to call it? Um, and it is super tender, 
and it's placed on a hoagie roll, usually a seated hoagie roll, with sharp provolone. Cooper Sharp is the, the local uh, option in Philly or the, the go-to, but sharp provolone, the roast pork, and then you have garlicky greens, also known as broccoli rabe or rapini. Um, so tons of garlic, uh, chili flake, maybe a little lemon juice in there. Um, and that's it. It's just a spectacular sandwich. You have the richness of the pork, the really bitter bite of the greens, creaminess of that cheese. It's spectacular. So what we're doing today, I'm merging those two sandwiches together, and I'm having something we're calling the Philadelphia. It is going to be Italian beef. I'm taking a little best of bust of both worlds here. The Italian beef from Chicago, the sharp problem from Philly, the greens from Philly, and then I'm bringing it all together with something I'm calling John De Nera. So if you're from Philly or you're familiar with Philly culture, there's a word called John, J-A-W-N. And I've learned this. I, I learned about this from friends that are from Philadelphia. Shout out. Jared and Brian, if you're watching this, I'm sure you aren't, but if you are, there's a shout out. Everything in Philly is a John, okay? Like that sandwich is a John. Oh, once you once you bring the once you get this John over here, this paper towel thing, this is this could be a John. Everything is a John. It's like a I don't know, like a multi-use word for everything. I don't know, Philly people are weird, but uh, I love it. It's hilarious. It's great. Everything's John. So I decided to call something my Jardin era. I created what's called John De Nera, all right? So another thing that I didn't mention, this is not always an ingredient on a pork and green sandwich out there. You can get it, but there is a pepper called the long hot pepper, uh, also known as the Jimmy Nardello pepper, um, Italian long hots. It's a pepper that's really native to Philly in that area uh, and really just the East Coast. Um, you can't really typically, can't typically find them in Chicago, but... Thanks uh, to the John Boo market, a great Korean market out here in my neighborhood. I found long hot peppers. And so I said, hey, why the hell don't I just make something? Let me make Jardinera out of long hots. I've never seen that before. I'm like, let's let's make history. Let's do it. So I uh, took some long hot peppers and sliced them up, pickled them, and uh, just sliced up a bunch of other vegetables. So got some carrot, got some celery. Um, some cauliflower, some olives. Um, what else is in here? Yeah, that's pretty much it. So I got that all mixed up and also have some uh, some sport peppers as well in there. All of that was pickled and then preserved in some oil, hence the John De Nera, all right? So we have our John De Nera. And then lastly, on an Italian beef is just made like on a typically like Toronto bread, probably like a French style roll, French roll, not a French baguette, but like a French roll, um, so if you a sandwich roll. In Philly, you're using a seated hoagie roll, so I'm going to use a seated hoagie roll with that. So, again, seated hoagie roll, sharp provolone, Italian beef, broccoli rabe, John and era, and we're going to serve some uh, au jus on the side for the dip in. And boy, oh boy, I am excited about this. I I haven't seen a hybrid mashup of these two sandwiches anywhere, um, especially the long hot pepper jardinera. So, uh, we're going to have some fun today. Um, a lot of this had to be made ahead of time because I didn't think you're going to want to be here for 24 hours. So uh, I didn't want to do a 24 hour live stream to get this done. So I'm going to take you through elements that I've, the things that I made ahead of time, like Italian beef. So um, I'm not expecting everybody to make their own Italian beef, but if you're interested in doing that, I'm going to link up a, a full recipe uh, to this after the stream's done, I'll make sure our recipe's up, but I will tell you how I made the Italian beef. But if you want to do a shortcut and you don't want to make your own Italian beef, Vienna Beef t-shirt I'm wearing right here. Great Chicago brand, iconic Chicago brand. Uh, makes a great Italian beef. Pre-made, it's uh, basically frozen. Um, comes in a little bucket, basically. You thaw it out, heat it up on your stove top, you have Italian beef. There's other brands you can get throughout the country as well. I think Bona Beef does it too. There's Papa Charlie's, which is probably terrible, but there's other <laughs> brands. So if you want to do any of that, uh, feel free uh, and just totally use uh, some store-bought Italian beef. Or you know, if you're in Chicago uh, and you're feeling like, yeah, hey, I got a great beef. I live by Johnny's. I want to go grab some beef. Let's go grab a beef sandwich and pull the beef off that and do, do it this way and make your own little hybrid. So you can cut some short, uh, take some uh, shortcut steps there. But for my Italian beef, what I did start out with the bottom round and you're going to take a, make a spice blend. 
Spice Spice blend consisted of some fennel, uh, coriander, uh, tons of garlic. Uh, we'll, we'll, that'll be raw garlic. I, we have garlic powder in there as well. Garlic powder, onion powder, um, some dried thyme, dried basil. And uh, I actually used a little bit of this too. This is not traditional, but you can totally get without it. Did this on my last stream. JP Graziano, another great business here in Chicago, makes a mild jardinera uh, and hot jardinera spice blend. But you can totally skip this if you wanted to. Um, but basically, you get your spice blend, get it all all uh, all ground up. You can use whole, you know, if you have whole spices, great. If you're just using powder, just get that all mixed up together. Obviously, salt and pepper as well. Get that on some bottom round. I used, uh, I think it was about like a three pound bottom round because I didn't want to make like a mess, uh, a giant uh, mess of this. But whatever size you wanted to go to, anywhere between a three and five pound roast is probably great. You can use chuck if you want to use chuck. Eye of round works as well too. You just want a big cut of meat that's good for roasting. You're not using like, you know, you know, I don't want to use a ribeye or anything like that. It's a cheaper cut of meat that you're going to cook for a while. It's going to break it down. Okay. So you're going to set your oven at 375. Get all your, uh, get that coated in the spices and uh, coat a little olive oil. And then basically you want to get it in a Dutch oven or a roasting pan. You're going to set your oven to 375 and also take some beef broth, okay? About eight cups of beef broth and pour that into the pan. Get it, it'll probably sit about halfway up of the uh, of the beef. So like half of the beef will be exposed um, and not covered. You don't want to completely cover it. It's not gonna be like braising in it. You just want about halfway, uh, to get it halfway. So it should be about eight cups. And uh, you want to just roast that for about two and a half, three hours till the temperature, internal temperatures get to about uh, 130, okay? You want it basically medium rare because when you what we're going to do the next day basically is going to heat it up and so it's going to continue cooking even more and more so you're going to do that the night before um the reason you do that once you get to the temperature you take it out let it cool completely get it down to room temperature place the whole damn thing in the fridge the reason you want to do that is you want to be able to slice that really thinly and you're not going to be able to do that when it's when it's uh warm like that so once that sets you're going to take the beef out of the fridge, set that to the side, and start warming up your au jus that's on your stove top now that you've already had from the night before. Make sure it's seasoned really well. You want that really salty, a ton of salt. They want So if you take a little spoon of it, you want to be like, that's really strong, but you want that. You want it really salty and almost like an unctuous, uh, unctuous flavor. So you want to just warm that up. And then the beef, if you have the luxury of having a deli slicer, great. That's awesome. I don't have a deli slicer. A friend of mine has one. I was able to take it to him. He can he can slice it for me if I wanted to. I actually uh, took a tip from a friend of mine uh, who used the mandolin. So I had a really large mandolin, and I just got slices, um, pretty thin slices on there, uh, and just sliced it out. You don't have to do that even. If you just want to just simply um, use a knife and just try to get as thin, you just want to get as thin slices as possible. Okay, you're not looking to shred it. You just want thinly thin slices. And so the next day, and then what you want to do is just get your your au jus warmed up. Now you don't want it boiling. You just want it warm. And then you're gonna take your slices and drop it in and just let it sit and soak up and basically sit in your broth. And this is what this beef is gonna look like. Okay, I've had mine now sitting for a while. Look at that. You hear that? That's dripping. That's dripping. So that's your Italian beef. Like I said, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to take a two day process to make Italian beef, you totally don't have to do that. Um, but it's fun. Cooking's fun. Take on projects. It's great. Keeps you busy. Keeps you off the street. You know, you don't want to, you know, got there, you know, messing around, be a punk. Uh, stay off the street, you know? I don't know why I'm assuming all, all punks out there or anything. But uh, I have also have a guest in the kitchen today. Winnie, come here. Winnie. I have a wiener dog in the kitchen with me named Winnie. So there's a hot dog in my shirt. There's a hot dog here and there on the on the floor. I'm um, I'm dog sitting. I have another wiener dog myself, Einstein, which you've probably seen on a stream before. Um, but she is my little uh, sous chef in the kitchen today. So if I drop anything, Winnie um, will pick it up for me. So there's not a lot of really cooking we're going to be doing today. Only thing we want to do is get our broccoli rob ready, and uh, and then we'll be ready to go. So, um, broccoli rob is also known as rapini. Rapini is a bitter green. Um, it's uh, 
It's really sharp, really bitter, but it's excellent. Uh, it's one of my favorite, honestly, favorite vegetables in general. Uh, and it's very easy to make. So you get a bunch of broccoli, Rob. Um, and again, to save time, I did this a little ahead, ahead of time. But you want to blanch this. You want to partially cook it um, because sometimes the stems can be fibrous and they don't cook as quick as the leaves do. They're going to wilt pretty quickly. But what you want to do is get a pot of salted boiling water, drop these in for about two minutes. After two minutes, you want to drop them into an ice bath to shock them and stop it. It'll keep a bright green color, as you see, but it also partially cooks, uh, cooks them. So now what we want to do is we want to get this really garlicky and um, get it like kind of charred in spots as well. So what I'm going to do, these are kind of long and I want to basically cut them into segments here. Okay. So got our broccoli wrap. You want to dry it. I've had these drying for a while on a paper towel, also on a, on a wire rack. Um, you just want to cut these into more manageable sections. So I'll probably take it into three. I'll cut this whole thing into three. So just one, two, eh, three cuts. Okay. So we got the stem. Stems are actually going to go a little smaller in the stems. Okay. Um, and what we want to do now is in a in a pan, I'm going to use a carbon steel pan, use a nonstick, whatever you want to do, over medium heat. Let's get that warmed up. And running low on olive oil. So get a little olive oil in this pan, enough to coat it, coat the bottom. So about a tablespoon and a half. Actually, a tablespoon is probably enough. Um, Make sure that's fully coated. Let that warm up. Um, but we are basically, I have, this is about, how many? Let's see. I think I used like six pulls of garlic. Um, five, six pulls of garlic, just sliced. Sliced garlic. Um, we are going to get that oil to heat up, and we're going to drop in our garlic, and then our chili flakes. I'm going to use a about a teaspoon kind of eyeball of red chili flakes. Um, we just want to basically infuse that oil with the um, garlic and the red chili flakes uh, to have a you know bright pungent spicy oil and then we're just going to get these um get the broccoli rob in there to just cook it it's already it's already cooked so or partially cooked at least um so we want to just kind of get it charred get it all infused hit it with a good, a good amount of salt and uh we'll be good to go um let's just get that up and then we can uh set that aside and we're going to build a Build a sandwich. I am like, I told you, I am so excited about this sandwich. I can't wait. I've been thinking about like, I just want to share. I've been trying to share like the elements of it, but like, I'm paranoid in my head, thinking like, if I release the ingredients of the sandwich in the build it, someone's gonna make it ahead of me, and I want to be the first. I want to be the first person who broke the barrier and said, "Hey, listen, Philly, Chicago, Bears fans, Eagles fans, Sox fans, Cubs fans, Phillies fans." come together. We're going to put our hands out. This might be the time that we have to apologize and say, you know what? Our Philly fans can apologize and say, listen, we're sorry about the double doink. Okay. A, a night that I'll remember, uh, it'll be in my head forever is uh, Cody Parkey's double doink in the playoffs against the Eagles. But this sandwich is going to bring our two cities together and say, you know what? Philadelphia, let's lay back. Let's have a beef sandwich. Let's have a roast pork sandwich. Let's combine them. And let's have some draw denera. And this draw denera, just to warn you, if you make it, it is spicy. It is a booty hole burner. And that's in a good way. But I had a couple just, just pieces of the, uh, the of the pickled long hots. Shoot, it's hot. It's hot. It's spicy, boy. But it's all good. All right. We're just going to get this uh, garlic in. Chili flakes in, and just get this moving. You want to kind of be quick about it because you don't want the garlic to burn. Garlic can go from really fragrant, sweet, almost when it's cooked, to super bitter if you burn it. So 
You want to just, we're going 30 seconds here. 30 seconds just to get this softened, maybe a little color on it. And then careful, you want to make sure that this is dry, but uh, get your broccoli rob in there, okay? You're going to have some sizzles. No stem left behind. All right, now just get this mixed up. You want to get your oil, um, get that oil, get the garlic all, all over this broccoli rub, okay? And I have this over medium heat. Just stirring, just to get the garlic and everything completely coated. And then I'll just let it sit for a couple seconds and Okay, pick up some color. I love if I if I could possibly get a little color on there too. That'd be cool. Um, also, need to hit it with a bunch of salt. And a little black pepper. I did salt the water prior to um, you know blanching this, so it does have some salt already, but you can never have too much. I'd rather have it a little saltier than not being salty at all. So, going to let that sit. Let that cook for maybe another minute or two. That's it. It's going to be really, really simple. Um, in the meantime, we'll talk bread. Like I said, typical uh, Italian beef is on a French roll. You don't want to, I want, I don't want to use a French roll. I want to use a seeded roll. Um, typically I would actually make my own hoagie rolls. I love doing it, but it's been kind of busy lately. So this is just for my local grocery store, Tony's. I love what they do. They have a great, great sub roll, hoagie roll, if you will. Um, otherwise go to a local bakery, get it from them. There's nothing better than going to a bakery, getting fresh bread in the morning. Um, it's awesome. So I would recommend, you know, finding a great spot. If you're in Philly, I mean, if you're watching this and you're in Philly, you have, the pick of the litter of great bed, uh, bread in Philly. Uh, that's one thing that I think is from, I've heard it a ton from my friends that are from Philly. There is such a difference in bread between Chicago and Philly and even other cities in general. They just do hoagies and hoagie rolls right. I don't know what it is, but places like Angelo's, uh, like Angelo's is the, the truth. I watch everything they put on their social media, on their Instagram, and it's like, their bread is spectacular. Um, I haven't even had it, and I can say it's spectacular. I know it, um, but it's uh, it's amazing. So this has been cooking for what, about a minute, minute and a half, two minutes. I'm going to just squeeze some lemon juice to give it a little brightness on top. This is just about half of a lemon. Do a little taste test. All right, so, yeah, that's good. So, whew, rock that is bitter. So I'm gonna pull this to the side really quick and try to let this cool for a moment. Um, get something to put this on. So have that to the side and uh, let's build a sandwich. How about that? So let's do this. The baiting, I want to wrap this up uh, into a sandwich wrap, but I think I'll do my other ones, but I'd like to usually wrap this up. Italian beef sandwiches are typically wrapped in the paper um, because it helps just kind of keep it together. So I think actually I'll, I'll just do that anyway. So, some parchment paper. All 
All right. All right, guys. It's time to build. All right, so I sliced open this bread and I left a, I didn't cut completely through it. I want to leave a hinge um, so I can kind of get it open, but it still stays together, okay? So careful when you, uh, when you kind of get that together there. So we're going to start out by my provolone that I got. The sharp provolone was in a... Um, basically like a block of it, um, a small like triangular block, I would say. It's not like slices of, of cheese. You can have, you have access to, sharp, to Cooper Sharp Provolone in Philly. I don't have that here in Chicago. So um, I just took uh, that block of cheese and I just sliced off really thin uh, slices. So just layer of cheese on the bottom. I'm gonna go cheese on the bottom first. The reason is I want the, the beef that we're gonna put on here. Um, let's do it this way. So the beef will essentially get this melted. So we've got our beef. Okay, just big old scoop full. This is probably about, I'd say four ounces of beef. And then let's go. I think I want to build this. Drop the beef down really quickly. So we can go two ways. I'm debating if I want to put the jardinera on first. So typically, the Italian beef sandwich, it's beef, and then you got the jardinera on top of it, or the John Denaire, I should say. Um, but thinking. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go Jardinera second, second layer. Okay, so John Denera is going on second here. So we're gonna get this, and this was spicy. So I'm gonna kind of go. I'm gonna go over the top with it. All right, get that press into it, and then lastly. I mean, this is right. This right here, I would just. This is just a great Italian beef right here. All right, this John De Nero is basically just a spicy jar. But let's get some of the greens on here now. Side. I mean, look at this thing. Like, look at that. Look at that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do a full on wrap of this. Okay. So here's your, here's your sandwich. Now, just take this, get one side, and then tuck that under. Roll it over, bring in the sides, and then just tightly roll that. All right, let that sit for a second. We'll let the, the heat um, melt that uh, melt that uh, sauce, let everything melt together. And then what I'm going to do here is typically, like I said, in Chicago, you can dip your sandwich. Um, I didn't want this to be a soggy mess when I ate it, so... What I'll do is get some au jus on the side and we'll dump it. A little ladle. Little Joel and B dunk here. So just scooping out. Uh, Couple spoonfuls of the au jus. All right. I can't wait. I can't 
can't wait. I can't wait. This is going to be awesome. All right. So. Ho, 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 ho. Look at that. There you go. There is. Do this better. There you go. Too much damn paper. The Philadelphia, Chicago, and Philly coming together to make one spectacular sandwich. So, of course, it's taste test time. Also, didn't wear an apron for the stream. Um, so, good luck to this beautiful shirt that I'm wearing. So, we have our jus. Woo! That's good. All right. So, gonna get a dip. And cheers to the Philadelphia. And by God, that's a swing and a drive. Deep right field. That one's gone. All right. That is a home run. Philadelphia, Chicago, Italian beef. The John De Niro gives a spicy, spicy vinegary cut into that beef. The bitter broccoli, Rob. The melted sharp provolone. Seeded roll. This is... The Philly Post roast pork sandwich is hard to beat as what I think it's my favorite sandwich, but honestly, give me beef inside of that baby instead of pork, and boy, oh boy, this John De Niro slaps. So, I mean, I got another bite of this. That's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. This is Sunday sandwiches. Every Sunday, 11 a.m. Central Time, I'm bringing you an original sandwich recipe. Um, you can go back on my uh, on my page, my kids' channel here. You can scroll through and watch my Sunday sandwiches from last fall. This whole thing started during the football season. I wanted to create a different original sandwich every Sunday to coincide with the Bears' schedule because they were going to stink last year. I needed something um, good to look forward to. Nothing better than a sandwich on a Sunday. So that was my idea at first. But then as I started... Uh, you know, thinking about it for a while now, like the season ended and I kind of stopped. I'm like, why don't I just do this every Sunday and put together original sandwich every Sunday? And so last week we did the Lion's King, which is a lion's main mushroom uh, Parmesan sandwich was uh, pretty awesome. Full recipes on there. And that's one thing that's different this year than last year. Every week, excuse me, burping up beef. Every week I'm going to be making sure that the, obviously the streams will be up, but I'm going to put recipes up so you can make these sandwiches as well. So uh, make sure that you are, Signed up for a kitchen account so you have access to all our recipes. Make sure you're following me. Follow me on Instagram, the real Billy Z as well. And uh, make this sandwich, the Philadelphia. It will, it will be. Mark my words. If you're in Chicago, this will be a future collaboration um, sandwich, and you will be able to try it because the people need this. This is a special sandwich. So I hope you guys have an amazing Sunday. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you watch live, I appreciate you. If you're watching on demand, you rock too. Uh, leave me a comment on my page. Tell me, hey, I love this sandwich. I don't like this sandwich. Shoot me a DM on Instagram. Say, Billy, you are making great sandwiches. Billy, I love your shirt. I love you, Billy. Whatever you want. Just hit me up. All right? I will see you guys very soon. My name is Billy Zuricat. Billy Z, a.k.a. Tripping Billy. All of it. Thank you for joining me this Sunday. I'll see you next Sunday. It is uh, Mother's Day, I believe, next Sunday, but I'm still going to try to get a sandwich out early. Um, we're going to have some fun. So I love you guys. Appreciate you. Philadelphia. Rocks.